I quote, says, resilience isn't a single skill. It's a variety of skills and coping mechanisms to bounce back from the downward as well as failures. You should focus on emphasizing the positive. Unquote. A very good afternoon to one and all gathered here. I, Manasa of Second MBA B, deem it my great privilege to be the MC for this third technical session panel discussion on resilience to reinvention. I, on behalf of SDM PG Center, would like to extend my warm welcome to you all. <laughs> Amongst us, we have three eminent personalities as panelists. Mr. Johnson Tellis, Mr. Vikram Vasudev Poochari and Ms. Lakshmi Shetty and Dr. Malini Hebbar as a moderator. I now call upon Mrs. Sumati, Assistant Professor, SDM PG Center to welcome the ladies and the gathering. Good afternoon to one and all present here. It's my privilege to welcome you all to this resourceful panel discussion session. Today, we have with us very, very eminent and resourceful persons as panelists and moderator who would be enlightening us on varied aspects of resilience and reinvention. Firstly, Mr. Johnson Tellis, CEO and co-founder in Unity LLP Bangalore is with us who will be speaking on community center innovations and wealth opportunities for all. I, a warm welcome to you, sir. We also have Mr. Vikram Pujari, Head University Hiring Relations, Brain Enterprises, to enlighten us on the topic, Resilience, the Future Skill. Welcome to you, sir. Ms. Lakshmi Shetty, Manager, Talent Acquisition, Robosoft Technologies Private Limited, will be addressing us on Change, Adapt and Survive, a journey nation. A warm welcome to you, madam. The moderator for today's session is Dr. Malini Heba, Principal, Swastika College, Mangalore. A warm welcome to you, madam. I would also like to extend a warm welcome to our director, Dr. Seema Yeshanai. Welcome, madam. I would also like to welcome all the faculty, teaching and non-teaching to this panel discussion session. A hearty welcome also goes to all the delegates and the paper presenters. Last but not the least, I welcome all my dear students to this panel discussion session. Welcome to you all. Thank you, ma'am. A hearty welcome to you too. Now I call upon Ms. Krita to introduce Mr. Johnson Tellis. Good afternoon, everyone. I, Krita, of second MBAB, take this privilege to introduce our esteemed panelist for today's session, Mr. Johnson Tellis. Mr. Johnson Tellis is the CEO and co-founder of Inunity LLP through which he envisions to empower the youth with an entrepreneurial mindset to build products that will impact the lives of next billion that dwell in time. sister company, Private Limited, Mr. Tellis believes in upskilling and nurturing competences that are driven by empathy and compassion. He is also the part of advisory panel of KDM Karnataka Digital Economy Mission and task force member at GAME Global Alliance for Mass Entrepreneurship through which he strives to encourage youth entrepreneurship. Being a, being a governing council member at Sayadri College of Engineering and Management and the director of Atal Community Innovation Center Sayadri, he is focused on building a model for higher education institutions to be the epicenter of community development. The model which is currently being replicated across Karnataka and Delhi through various partner organizations. He has been instrumental in incubation of 22 successful student-led startups which have received seed funding of 2.6 crore upwards. Apart from being an eloquent public speaker, he is an avid writer and blogger and has successfully, successfully mentoring students in their entrepreneurship journey since the last decade. With this brief introduction, I present before you 
Mr. Johnson Tennis. Thank you, Krita. I would like to call upon Ms. Pragna Rao to introduce Mr. Vikram Vasudev Puchari. Good afternoon, one and all gathered here. I, Pragna, from 2nd NDAB, deem it my privilege to introduce the panelists, Vikram, Mr. Vikram Vasudev Pujari, Lead University Hiring and Relations, Brain Enterprises, Bangalore. Sir is an MSW HR graduate from Mangalore University in 2008 and BHR from Mangalore University in 2006. Sir has accomplished professional offering over 15 years of rich and extensive experience in managing all phases of full cycle university recruiting. Proficient in leading talent management, university recruiting, talent engagement, HR operations and onboarding for effective engagement of early career talent. Resourceful in managing employee life cycle, grievances, employee engagement and MIS through strong awareness of standard conditions of employment. Expertise in talent transformation projects and enhancing candidate experience during virtual hiring. Mr. Vikram has also involved in HR tasks like screening resumes, conducting interviews and also conducted pre-placement talks along with business model heads prior to virtual hiring event. Sir has collaborated with schools across tires for talent attraction and full-time hiring. He functioned towards LXC Driven Drum as an HR Associate Manager, Confit Bangalore as Senior Recruiter Early Careers. With this brief introduction, I present before you Mr. Vikram Vasudev Pujari. Once again, I welcome you. Thank you, Pragna. I now request Shritika to introduce Ms. Lakshmi Shetty. Good afternoon. I, Stritika of 2nd MBA, take this privilege to introduce our esteemed panelists for today's session, Ms. Lakshmi Shetty, Manager, Talent Acquisition, Robosoft Technologies, Private Limited. Lakshmi Shetty is a native of Udupi, born and brought up in Maharashtra. She is a HR professional and work as an academician with more than 15 years of experience in corporate as well as in education industry. She has worked, her, she has completed her uh, Bachelor of Engineering, specialized in electronics from Shivaji University, then went on to complete Masters of Administration. is currently working in Robosoft Technology Private Limited, Odupi as a manager, talent acquisition, handling the role of campus relationship manager, HR by profession, but teacher and mentor by choice. She loves to interact with student community and guide them on career progression, preparation required for various technical and non-technical roles and social uh, and soft skill development. With this brief introduction, I present before you Ms. Lakshmi Shetty. Thank you. Thank you, Shetika. It's my honor to introduce the moderator of the session, Dr. Malini Hebbar. Dr. Malini Hebbar is currently the principal of Swastika College and guest faculty at St. Agnes Center for PG Studies and Research. Ma is a former associate professor and HOD of English at St. Agnes UG and PG. She is a member of the Research Ethics Committee of Kasturba Medical College, secretary of ISTD Mangalore Udupi chapter. She has served many educational institutions as a member of BOS, IQAC and other academic bodies. Dr. Hebba has been certified as a trainer by Bosch India for their skill development program. She has been certified by Skill India as a trainer with A grade. She has also undergone Bosch training program organized by ISTD. Ma'am has received the awards of teacher who has moved beyond academics and Kala Ratna from Mandu Musical and Cultural Association. Most talented teacher from Rotaract, best actor in Rotary Zonal Level Competition, best MC in Lions Interclub Competitions. She has been cited by Daiji World and Mandalorian.com as a woman achiever. In Toastmasters, she has earned the highest recognition of 
award four times. She is the former candidate textbook called Ms. Ashla Pilot, who are presenting their research articles, may move to fourth floor at 3 p.m. paper presentation session. I repeat, paper presenters may move to the fourth floor at 3 p.m. sharp for their paper presentation. I have request Madam to take over. students and guests of the days. It's customary for me to thank the one who introduced me, that's the MC, whose name I didn't get. I got all the other names. But I thank all of you because you have made my job easier by introducing the panelists. Otherwise, the moderator sometimes is supposed to introduce the panelists. You have made it easier for me by giving such uh, an extensive, comprehensive introduction of the panelists. Sumati, ma'am, thank you for asking me to be with us. The key word is resilience, but before I move on to the topic of the evening, I wonder whether you have resilience to sleep right now, because it is the post-lunch session that gets described as a VUCA world, full of volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity. But let's think for a while, isn't it true that the world has always been a VUCA world? At different points in our history, we have had different types of problems. Maybe our generation witnessed the pandemic and we started thinking about the uncertainties. But right now, me, what is even more, um, not exactly frightening, but I must say disturbing, is the concept of artificial intelligence, chat, GPT, because you do not really know where the world is moving ahead. That is why reinventing ourselves and upskilling our And I'm happy that you have the youngsters here who have already put in so much work in the field of skills and upgrading students here with us. And they have already been introduced. Mr. Johnson Tellis, Mr. Vikram Pujari, Ms. Lakshmi. Shetty. Now the panel discussion will be in this particular uh, flow. Each of them, is it Dr. Seema? Yes. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I waved at you but without my specs, I did not know whom I was waving at. <laughs> Warm welcome to the director of STM. Thank you Seema for being with us. You were welcomed a little while ago. Well, we have these three people to present to us their approach of resilience. Of course, I must say that each of them will have a presentation, although this is a panel discussion, each of them will make a presentation and uh, Vikram and Lakshmi have already told me that they would like to make very short presentations because they would want to have more questions, they would like to they would like you to field questions, so their presentation will be short. I have heard that Johnson Tellis will be making a presentation of... Yes. Are you going to make it last? Last presentation. I thought you wanted to be the last presenter and I wondered because nobody likes to be the last presenter usually. Yes. So we will have 30 minutes presentation by Mr. Johnson Tellis and as I said, Vikram and uh, Lakshmi will make their presentations. And only after all the three have made their presentations, we will be moving on to a panel discussion. Now, Mr. Johnson, Dennis' presentation is on community-centric innovation and wealth opportunities. And um, it's an interesting topic, although not many of us have had the opportunity of listening to a resource person coming up with his or her approach to this particular topic. 
So I will not talk about it because you are the resource person. I will listen to you very keenly to understand the topic and probably also to raise a few questions which I have, my own doubts, which I would like to clarify for the benefit of the audience and for my own benefit. So without further ado, may I request you, Johnson, to start your presentation on community-centric innovation and wealth opportunities. Now even as he gets ready, I heard the MC say that sharp at 3 you have to go for paper presentations. I want a clarification. Do they have to go sharp at 3 for paper presentation even if this session is not over? Okay. I just wanted that clarification because I do not want the panelists to get disturbed. When I see a few getting up and going, you will know that they have not lost their interest but they are, yes? it's just a few. The yes. Rest of us will yes. I just want the panelists and the moderator to feel at ease knowing that going for their paper presentation and not out of their uninterested <laughs> approach to the topic. Yes. So over to you, Mr. Johnson. Thanks, sir. Uh, thanks for setting the tone of the presentation. Now, otherwise, usually the introductions are very boring. And then by the time they finish the introduction, when we get up, we will also be you know, adding on to it. So by the time you are done, your resilience is gone. So I know that I have to speak on the topic of resilience, uh, but we will also kind of check. Uh, so okay, I'm going to present you something that I've been doing for the last 10 years. So I'll shrink it down to 30 minutes. Uh, but we will try to address two phases. First one, why resilience? Why now? Haven't we always been? Isn't that, the, isn't that the reason why we have grown as population? We are the only species we have been surviving for the last 2000-3000 years, correct? Dinosaur unta? Illa, ho gida do, residence illa do, alwa. Our yochana maadi didre, asteroid on the build tade, and the avari gothi didre, our on the spaceship ala build maadi didre, they would have existed with us. Do they exist now? You want to become extinct? Right. So, why now? Why are we talking about residence today? And then we will talk a little bit about, because we are, listen, I am the only engineer here. Man is engineer, right? Yeah, yeah, correct. So, you have two engineers here. So, I'm just assuming everybody else is from the MBA. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. You might have done engineering and then might have come down to MBA, correct? So, I'm presuming that much of you have understanding of technology and all of a sudden we are talking about AI, chat GPT, GPTs, etc. So, we'll also discuss a little bit on that. We'll not digress from the topic, we'll still come back to resilience. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, Kandar movie. Yes, yeah, How many of you are from? How many are? How many of you are not from Mangalore, but you have still watched Kandar movie? Thanks for contributing to Mangalore's economy. Okay. <laughs> right. So, let's just pick some topic. Because we are talking about technology, all of a sudden the thought comes is we have gotten it. Not technology. We were in technology. We were doing engineering, but we did not like engineering, so we switched to MBA. Thinking that there will be more scope. All engineers you have to manage. Correct? Yes, All engineers you have to manage. Because you don't want, don't want it, did not want to get into technology, you have gotten into management. Correct? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> what honesty. <laughs> That's why India is uh, growing at 5% uh, five, five GDP. Yeah. So let's let's get this, let's get certain things right. If we are talking about digital world where everything, every company that we are looking at, whichever is scaling rampantly, it's happening around the digital world. What are some of the skill sets that we are talking about? Cool? We are talking about all digital skills itself. It, no, we are not talking about digital skills itself. But we have recently heard, all of us would have thought of analytics, business analytics, consultant, correct? But if you see the last trend, out of the top 10 jobs that were supposed to go down, one of them was, Analytics itself. Because a lot of analytics is given by ChatGPT today, correct? Your assignments are always done by whom today? ChatGPT, correct? What are top 10 companies? What are their financial backgrounds? Tell me something more about it to give it to ChatGPT, correct? Because your friend wouldn't have known. Hey, fun, 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 assignments are done by who? Wouldn't have known. ChatGPT gives you that data because there is a lot of. Let's understand. Let's understand that whatever we are trying to uh, analyze today. It's all based on data that we have access. What is the amount of data that you can access or you can store in mind before you could do some processing in it? There is limitation. You used to then go to computers, 
you used to put the formula and then you used to do the computation and then whatever it inferred, you also added your intelligence and it came and said, Man, he said the either we were on the either we have to do work today, you do work today. Correct? That's what we have done. Now all of a sudden, GPTs, okay, general purpose, uh, your architecture that has been built, it has got access to all of that data. Not just text, not just speech, not just video. There's also access to a lot of data which has been published over internet. So when they have access to data, they can pretty much do better things. So that's why analytics is going a little down. Earlier, we had a lot of processing done on voice. So people who used to have BPOs on call centers especially, all those jobs have been slowly erupting. Why? Because most of the calls can be done by robots itself today. Most of the chats can be done or the engagement that has to be done can be done by robots itself. So we can see a lot of these skill sets slowly evading. Did I scare you enough? So we are talking about 45% of jobs getting transferred. I am not telling the data, this is OECD data. 45%. Although there are new jobs getting created, but 45% of existing jobs are also slowly getting evaded. Makes sense? Am I scaring you enough? Yes or no? Yes, In theory, we are very resilient crowd. Why are we talking about this topic? Okay. So therefore, if these skill sets are becoming a little redundant, I am not saying completely redundant, what are some of the skill sets that we can think of? Okay, look at these skill sets. Again, this is the OECD data and it's not picked from my personal choices. But if you look at some of the skill sets which cannot be replaced, these are empathy, active listening, leadership qualities, people management. Seems like engineers might lose jobs, but MBAs might not. What a right choice, huh? Life will just the wrong choices, Marty. Last year was the correct college, even Correct? Correct? Okay. So which basically means a lot of things that you do or the skill sets that you are building, those skill sets are not, not replaced. Okay? Interesting. But I used the word skill set. You don't want to do that. Bring that back into context. Now, 
what? What? 10 to the power 14. Okay, that made up his kingdom. He did not have that much of weights. What is the example of? It was so abundant. It was it was taking the grains of the neighboring king, the kingdoms also. What is this an example of? Power of compounding. Com power of compounding. compounding. You are interested. I say sahi hai. Uske baas hai. Okay, so it is the power of compounding, right? Now you can apply this. In, you have applied it in finance. Can you apply it in your own skills, right? I'm not saying that overnight you will become skilled. It is impossible. Impossible, even if I give you my training. I can come here today, talk for 20 minutes and go. Impossible for you to build a skill set. What I can create? Awareness. I can sensitize you. I can put some spark in your mind. You might only have had an experience. I can connect to those experiences and tell that this is what it means. My perspective which becomes your knowledge. Who builds skill set? Who builds skill set? Are, who builds the skill set? Can I build skill set for you? Bah, football, body, body, body. Can I do that for you? No. You have heard about Rafael Nadal who became uh, the, uh, he had the most uh, titles. You book, read his book called Rafa. Okay? He started at the age of six. When he barely could run, he was playing tennis. Okay? And that culminated to who, be, who, he, who he became eventually, right? So, skill sets are like component. So, you start today. And over a period of time, with a lot of experience, it compounds. And at one point of time, you become so, the things become so abundant that people will start calling you for that particular purpose. You become a specialist in it. Of course, you need to be generalist in this world. But I'm also saying that you got to be specialist in your own field. You need to know what's happening elsewhere so that you can connect the dots. But at the same time, you got to be special in your own field. And that happens because of compounding. Make sense? Make sense? Okay. Next slide. So therefore, how do you do it? What is, is there, a, uh, is there a way of doing it? And that's something that I would want to share. That's the community centric model that I'm speaking about. My interest is in entrepreneurship. I'm not asking everybody to become entrepreneurs, but you need to have an entrepreneurial mindset. Because an entrepreneur, the best part of an entrepreneur is he finds an opportunity in uncertainty. Ma'am spoke about uncertainty. What's uncertainty? You don't know what's going to happen. You must don't like uncertainty. Imagine some ma'am comes today. You don't know whether she's going to and of course, you have to build it. You have to build on top of it. But if you are able to predict it, then I call it an entrepreneurial mindset. You should be able, you should be, you should be resilient, you should be initiative oriented, you should be growth mindset, you should be ambitious, etc. There are 10 parameters I talked about, but all in all, it talks about entrepreneurial mindset. Now, I don't want to teach you on entrepreneurial mindset, but if I were to tell you a way of doing it, would that be okay? Okay? So, there are three things, three things that are necessary for some innovation to sprout. Okay? Some creative stuff to be done. Okay? So, those three things are desirability. You need to build something people want, right? That's the first step. You go and tell a business person, if you go and sell something to somebody, without knowing what he wants. Will really, right? you No. So which means the first principle is you ask person what do you need. Correct? Desire. The second one is you see whether it can be done. Feasibility. Can it be done or not? Last one is viability. You build it in a way that it comes within a call or that he perceives it as of a lot of value. Three things. Now if I were to tell each one of you to build it, if I come if I ask each one of you to come up with some innovation or creative stuff, might be a little difficult. So I'll give you an alternative power to do it. Cool? First one, go and ask in your region what is needed. Example, if you are interested in MSMEs, go and talk to KCCN in Mangalore, Canada Chamber of Commerce and Industry. If you are interested still in further in specific MSMEs, you can go to District Innovation Center, District Industry Center, which is there in Mangalore. If you are interested in a particular community, your parents belong to say fisheries community, go and talk to those fisheries community. There is a head here. You can go and talk to them or you can talk to the fisheries university as well. You will get to understand what's happening in that uh, community. When I say community, it's group of professions. Okay, I'm not talking to talking about a particular community, religious <coughs> not that. 
professional communities. You can talk to them, especially if you are a part of the association, you get to know a lot of things that is happening on the ground. Make sense? First one. Now, will you know all the answers, how to solve it? No. So, many people who might have come up with ideas, or might not know how to build on top of those ideas, or you might be somebody who know a part of the idea, you can tag along with them. Okay, where do you find them? Where do you find them? In your own college, there might be some clubs where some students are working on some ideas. Hey, let me go and tell, can I become a part of it? Or, go to neighboring colleges. If you are competitors for some other college, don't go to that college. You can go to engineering college. They are not your competitors. But you will have to someday take care of engineers only. Correct? Go to engineering colleges. Go and see what's happening. A lot of work happens in engineering colleges also. Can you go to those colleges? Yes. Okay, good. Or you can go and start seeing some of the incubators to start with. It's a great start. Incubators. Why? Because in these incubators, a lot of these companies that are being incubated are not working on some fresh ideas. They are not working on 1947 ideas. Make sense? So go on, go and start exploring things that are happening in incubators. Third one, you need business mentors. Somebody who can help them in businesses. Now, of course, there are mentors for those companies if they have already formed one. If not, you can become an associate in Okay? You can tag along and say, these are some of the areas, some of the areas that I wish to contribute in. For example, a lot of you guys are in finance, HR, marketing, right? Start contributing to that organization, small organization. Why? Because when they are small, they need a lot of help. They have to explore a lot of things. But they have a direction in which they have to go. They know, this is what I wish to do. But they don't know how it has to be executed. When you start working with them, a lot of these things can be picked up easily. Remember the example that I gave. I can tell you how to do it. I can tell you that these are some seven steps of Senko Foundation. Uh, how you have to have a great management. I can also tell you some other some other principles of Toyota way and so on and so forth. But I can't make you do it. <coughs> when will you be able to do it? When you actually go and work with them. You start applying what you have learned there. But those guys have goals, correct? They have revenue targets. They have certain aspects of learning and development. They have to learn certain skill sets in order to build it. A lot of these things are available. These are targets for the company. <laughs> Target for the company. So you help them in building it. Okay? By doing these three net dots, if you connect these three dots, you automatically start working on a project that is very real time. And you do that for about three months or six months part time, you actually start developing the skill sets. Unknowingly, you will have a lot of these terms with you. Which basically means next time when somebody comes for an interview, you can pretty much answer every question that they ask with confidence. Simple? No. It's not simple. That's what I said. Listening, it's music to hear. So, it's not simple. It's not simple. It's not simple. It's not simple. You're not the only one who's getting skilled. You're not the only one who's getting trained. Not Ours is not the only country that is focusing on, ours is not the only state which is focusing on jobs, ours is not the only country which is focusing on the next big stuff. We are still growing at 5, uh, 5 trillion, we are still targeting at 5 trillion, but our GDP is somewhere around 4.5 to 5, right? So if you really want to secure your future, you've got to do this and you have to get out of the campus first. Now question is, have I done this before? So you made it, but proof though is Bhikkhu. So I'll quickly run through, first one. Okay? These are a group of students who work with the cash rent industry, built their company, they are now working, building their software for 17 other companies. He's still in fourth year, but he's already making money, he's already paying four employees. This was a company that we formed long back, but the student who then eventually took, he got the seed fund, he's growing at the company, he's there in two states right now. This, he's still in fourth year, he recently got the funds that, uh, to build his prototype, but now he's actually uh, Nasik is being uh, funded by Tata's DISC program. Uh, this uh, guy, he, was, uh, he, wanted, he pivoted a lot of times, but uh, the final verdict is that he has built a sound system that uh, people, uh, if you know this nuclear band, Ritwis, they are the investors into this. And they recently raised uh, 4.5 crores to build the first 5,000 units. 
Uh, simple examples, if you see the uh, one in the left, it's actually a rubber tapping tool because the rubber association wanted a tool to give their semi-skilled employees, they built that. If you see on the right hand side, they built a small tool for uh, puff packets, milk puff packets, you know. So you have to chop up the tip, but this one you can just insert it, you can own students. Each of that has got about 40, 40, 45 levels. And the first order that they've got is about 1.6 crores. Okay, this is still, I'm talking about uh, students who are still in the third and final year. These are not rocket science. This is going down. We are consuming all the time. We are in Instagram and Snapchat. When I don't understand, you'll go back to your phone. Tick, 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 you'll swipe. Correct, swipe right, swipe left. Yes, right? So, if you don't observe, how will you be able to uh, point out at opportunities? Right? I don't want to sound like the same. Make sense? So all these things have come because of observation. So I told you a shortcut. Because you are not able to spot the opportunity, why don't you go and work in the way that I spoken? There are people who have already found an opportunity. Why don't you go and tag along with them and help them? In the process of helping them, you will apply whatever you have learned. They will challenge you. They will make sure that you achieve the goal. Right? In the process of achieving the goal, you will bring a success. Make sense? Make sense? Okay. On the topic of being uh, you know, resilient, there are three areas that you need to really focus. There's a book written called, a book by Angela Duckworth, which is written on resilience itself. So if you look at the whole philosophy, you go and read that book called Grit. If you read the whole philosophy, the whole philosophy is divided into three. Discover, develop, deepen. The reason why, you understand resilience, right? Should I uh, tell you the Oxford uh, definition of it? Because I don't know. <laughs> Thanks for saying Okay. So, if you look at those three phases, discover, develop, you can only be resilient when you love what you do. Okay? That means no matter who says you what, you will still continue doing it. Now you see, if you are taken engineering against your own wish, because your parents told you to do it, what would you have told when you got the first uh, low score in your subjects or if you had backlogs? What would you have told your parents? But if it is your, if MBA is your choice, what would you tell your parents? If parents are in the coming market, you need a very little. What would you say? You will obviously go back and learn, right? So if you discover, that means if you explore, how will you discover? If I tell you to go to a hotel and if I tell you uh, there is a best dish called dosa, every time you go to the hotel and you will only dosa, you will come on. Come on. What are you going to eat in Bobgas? There are about uh, 63 items there. Which item have you eaten most? Tiramisu is my favorite. Next time, we'll fish. Gatur only. Tiramisu, chocolate diet, then chocolate lava with vanilla slab, whatever, right? What about the other things? You have not eaten. Yeah, okay. It's just who they are able to experiment. What do you do? Gatur, 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 gatur. We do that, correct? Now, this is the mindset, right? If you have not discovered, how do I know what is my favorite? Right? So, explore to discover what you can do. Develop, that is by doing this. If you have already figured out what you want to do, can you please work with them and then improve upon it? And the last stage comes deepening. Deepening is where you go in depth in certain aspects, which is your career. What is the difference between job and career? Simple. Job is short term, career is long term, which means you do multiple jobs to find your career. Okay? Don't tell this is my career. No. You do it multiple times, over a period of time, series of jobs become a part of your career. Right? So, which basically means it's an ongoing journey. But on the journey, if it has to keep going, that means whatever you have chosen right should be of your interest. Which basically means when you are in college, you should explore a lot of these opportunities in order to find something that keeps you going. Make sense? Make sense? So, what is the summary? What is the summary? Summary is when you are in college, focus on two aspects. What is knowledge? What is the skill? Don't tell I have learned. Show that you have learned. Go to your college to find those three folks. Start working even if it is a small organization. Don't expect money. Tell them I, I need experience. Go work. And then over a period of time, discover something that you are really interested in. Develop certain aspects of you in that area and eventually be focused on something that is long term. That becomes your career. But I'll share the presentation. I know that you have not written anything. That's what better work. Suppose if they don't send me what they have learned. Okay, I'll share my WhatsApp number so you guys, if you have any queries, you can always ask. If you ask anything.
Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Thompson Dennis, for that uh, energetic, enthusiastic, erudite presentation that you made. It shows your passion for empowering uh, students through community-centric uh, education. So thank you very much for coming up with such pertinent ideas. having its uh, stronghold over intelligence quotient. Just one observation, you asked for engineers. Many of us here women are also engineers because we are domestic engineers. All right. <laughs> now to the audience here, Johnson Delays um, made an observation about not having a book where you have put down points. I always feel that as the saying goes, you must ink what you think. Now, if you think that you will remember everything that the presenter has presented to you, sadly, you are wrong, because within 20 minutes of listening to a person, you would have forgotten 80% of what that person has come up with. So, keep your questions ready, please, for the panel discussion. He referred to a creature that has gone extinct. May I ask which creature that he referred to? <laughs> Very good, yes. Thank you. From here and there, I get the answer. But I would like to add my own observation about that. Now, if you and I are sitting here, even after the dinosaur has gone extinct, it is because of a very small, furry creature, which you could actually put on the palm of your hand, that survived, even when 90% of the mammals went extinct. And that furry creature is our ancestor. And it adapted itself, as Johnson Tillis said, to the environment, to the eating habit, to everything, and also grew its brain. And that is how we are here discussing the power of resilience. Now, may I now request Mr. Vikram Pujari. I don't know. I didn't hear a round of applause when it was announced that he is a student of STM and also the best outgoing student of STM. Am I right? <laughs> so, it's an honor for all of you that he has come back to his alma mater to share his uh, expertise and experience with you. He will be speaking on resilience, the future skill that you must have with you. Over to you. Good afternoon, folks. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, yes. sir. That's better. Thank you. I'm sure Johnson has uh, done a good job of uh, making sure all of you are uh, not put to sleep and you are live and kicking, right? Uh, great presentation, Johnson. It was nice listening to you. And I hope all of you had some good insights to take from Johnson's session. Uh, I'll keep my presentation very short in the interest of time. I know. Uh, we have another speaker after me uh, who will also share her thoughts. So I'll keep it short in the interest of time and then I'll look forward to having more questions from all of you. Right? So please bear with me if I'm going too fast. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a bit I work for this company called Brain Enterprises. Uh, we have a low code platform called NSL Hub. Has anybody here heard about low code? Yes? No? Maybe? No? Okay. So we are actually creating a platform. Say for example, Amazon is an e-commerce platform. Likewise, we have a product called uh, NSL Hub, National Solution Language Hub, where we enable uh, developers, that is software developers, to create applications in a matter of few minutes or few hours. Right? Uh, say for example, even you, without knowing coding, without learning coding, that is Java, Python, C, whatever, software uh, programming languages could create applications on our platform, right? Uh, we are yet to launch the product in the market, but when it goes live, each user will be able to create applications. Say for example, you have Facebook, right? You could probably uh, think of a similar platform or a similar app, which is more user friendly, probably does not uh, make you spend anything, and it is more user friendly, right? Uh, if you have an idea, you can get on our platform and create your own app and go live in a matter of few hours. You don't need to have server, you don't need to know coding, but it's all possible with our 
platform. So that's what we are uh, trying to create and uh, we have around 2000 employees based in uh, Bangalore and Hyderabad. Of course our headquarters being Hyderabad. Next slide please. Please skip this. Next slide. How many of you have seen this picture? Or is this a real picture if I can ask so? Do you think it's a fake image or a real image? Fake? How many of you say fake? Please raise your hand. Okay, some are not sure. So the rest of you think it's real. So can anyone tell me what image is this or who is in action here? If it is real. I hope all of you are able to view the image, right? Clear in the back? Any guess? No prizes for guessing, but please take a shot. <coughs> oh, somebody like Vikram flying uh, above the sea. Alright, uh, thanks for that sir. So this is a real image guys. Uh, this is a British Navy SEAL, that is a commando, who is moving from a smaller uh, speedboat to the uh, larger uh, defense ship there, right? And this is a real jetpack suit which has been designed by a British startup and uh, the British Navy seats are already using it. In fact, recently I read an article that even Indian Army is procuring this uh, jetpack suit which enables the soldier to fly up in the air for a matter of few hours completely in control. They can maneuver and uh, get into defense combat operations using this jetpack suit, right? It is pretty expensive right now. But don't be surprised one day if there is a democratization of this particular suit and all of you will be able to fly uh, for a short distance wherever or whatever you are trying to do, right? Uh, what am I trying to show through this image? Uh, just trying to help you understand how things are evolving or things are changing, right? Uh, probably a decade back when I was in college, something like this was unimaginable. Uh, but today technology, <coughs> Uh, Internet of Things, Artificial Intelligence is driving a lot of these kind of innovations. Uh, the message here is, I think we need to be tuned to what is changing around us and also ensure that we are ready for the future, right? You need to constantly upskill yourself. Uh, things keep changing in terms of technology, in terms of skills, in terms of expectation for a, a graduate who's coming out of college because 15 years back when I graduated from here, I don't think the expectations were similar to what we have today. So definitely there is a drastic change and I think you need to be informed and aware and also make efforts to keep yourself relevant. Being relevant is the most important thing if you ask me. Next slide please. Uh, this of course I will not talk much here uh, but I am sure all of you know how banking has changed uh, because of technology, because of uh, uh, automation, right? Gone are the days where I have to stand in a queue and take cash after 15 minutes or 20 minutes of pro, uh, giving my check to get cash. Today you just get cash in a matter of few seconds and in fact UBI has changed the way we do uh, banking transactions. Next slide. Uh, this is again a, a AI enabled a kiosk in airports which is being uh, used in most of the uh, major airports in India and also abroad. Uh, so it has actually eliminated uh, the need for human beings to be uh, working at airports because the machine is going to be issuing tickets, the machine is going to be helping you to self-help do the uh, web check-in or uh, check into your respective flights, right? Uh, again, I think a lot of jobs that are there and are, that are currently there will evolve. I'm not saying it will go off, it will evolve, right? Best example is chat GPT that uh, uh, the speaker earlier was also mentioning. Now, ChatGPT is not going to change everything, but it will speed up certain work or processes which are taking more time. Say, for example, if I was a call center employee or a BPO employee, maybe I was taking five to six hours for a process or a report, maybe ChatGPT will get that done in maybe 30 to 40 minutes, right? If someone can apply their common sense and logic, chat GPT will make a report making matter of few minutes instead of hours together, right? So that's the kind of change that's happening around us and I think you need to be uh, ready for this change. You need to know which are the latest tools, which are the latest uh, uh, technologies that uh, you need to be adapt with so that you are relevant for the job of the people in the room, right? You just have to tell it that so and so person needs to be detected anywhere in the globe. It will actually figure out using AI and other softwares where so and so person is right now, pinpoint and it can even destroy the target, 
in a matter of few seconds or minutes. That's the capability that this particular US drone has. Next slide. Next slide, please. Next. Okay, so Johnson was telling about dictionary uh, meaning of resilience. I just thought I'll put it up for all of you. Uh, because this word is something that is my favorite uh, ever since the COVID times, if you ask. Uh, believe me, all of you here in this room, including the ones on the dais, I think we all have been resilient uh, during those two, three years of COVID times. And that's why we are here in this hall, right? So nobody teach, needs to teach you or preach you about resilience because we all have done that and uh, it is in our DNA, right? To uh, overcome failure or uh, come back and uh, survive through tough times. Uh, but what is important is the thought process. Uh, that approach, that mindset that yes, uh, you will accept failure, break down, you will not give up and you will continue no matter how hard the going gets, right? How difficult the going gets, you still need to uh, push yourself, keep yourself motivated and make sure you come out with flying colors out of whatever failures or hurdles that you face in your day to day life. Uh, that's the message I want to uh, leave you all with. I just will take another minute to give two uh, cents from my side. Uh, in terms of my experience and uh, what I have learned during my uh, uh, career in the last one and a half decade, uh, today a lot of things are happening using artificial intelligence, uh, which means uh, you need to be tech savvy, you need to uh, embrace technology and get used to uh, living alongside technology, right? Whether you like it or not, uh, most of our work is through AI driven tools, software that we use for day to day work. Uh, there's a lot of high turnover in the industry. People are quitting companies, there's high attrition. Uh, HRs are figuring out how to retain people, how to engage the uh, millennial workforce. Nobody has the answers, honestly. Uh, we're talking about gig economy, which is typically nothing but as a service uh, business model, right? Uh, you have companies today who don't even own a single car, but they are uh, giving rights to millions of customers across the globe, the Ubers and the Olas of the world. They don't even own a single car uh, on their platform. It's all gig economy. Typically what it means is uh, you just pay for the service that you use, whether it's a car, the driver, uh, like the... Uh, even the hotel industry, right? Uh, we saw disruption there. Nobody uh, who owns the hotel runs those hotels. It's all outsourced. You just pay for whatever you use. Likewise, we are talking about uh, gig economy or gig workforce, which means you'll be given a project or you'll be given an assignment, which will be for six months or one year. Uh, you may not be getting a permanent employment for the entire rest of your life. Uh, like the government jobs that we have today, you could be hired for a year or two for a specific assignment. You do that and you then find your next gig. Uh, that's going to be the future uh, in terms of uh, workforce management. And uh, it is very important that uh, you have a good presence on social media platforms. Uh, make use of social media platforms for the right purpose. Don't misuse is my advice. I've seen a lot of youngsters bring up opportunities, whether it is personal or professional because of uh, use of uh, things on social media, right? Uh, how many of you here on LinkedIn? Okay, great. Good to see that. But those of you who are not on LinkedIn, please get on to LinkedIn. There's a lot of interesting content. If you're serious about making a good career, LinkedIn is where you'll find the right people. You need to follow the uh, people who actually can give you a lot of interesting content and knowledge. Uh, that's where uh, a lot of industry professionals are active. So please be uh, online on LinkedIn and get going. Uh, I think rest of the things, uh, just one last point, uh, I think what Johnson mentioned, having a coach is very, very important, guys. Uh, I think our Indian uh, traditions mentioned about Guru, Shishya, system of uh, education, right? Uh, likewise, in your career, when you start your careers or when you are uh, just into the industry and building a career, it's very, very important to have a good mentor. Uh, it could be your uh, relative, it could be your friend, somebody at college, could be even the faculty whom you connect well with. But I think it's very important you have a mentor, especially when you're starting your career, because that will help you to avoid doing the, or falling for the pitfalls which generally people fall for. In terms of career, jobs, uh, making the right uh, decisions when it comes to opportunities. So if possible, 
uh, have a mentor for yourself who could guide you professionally uh, to an extent maybe sometimes even personally but it's very important you have someone uh, guiding you uh, especially when you are confused what to do right so that with that thing i will uh, close the uh, presentation back to you ma'am thank you thank you vikram what an interesting and edifying uh, presentation thoroughly enjoyable and also educative but you almost frightened me i can almost imagine a drone somewhere there targeting dr malini herbal in particular so i feel quite nervous sitting here nevertheless when you spoke about chat gpt the relieving feature for me as an english professor is that i believe chat gpt passed all tests but not the test of literature so we are safe there i have a couple of questions for you which i will come up with if the audience does not come up with the same questions that's for a later point of time moving over to the only lady panelist that is uh, ms lakshmi shetty i think the topics of the two of you are interconnected because ms lakshmi shetty is also going to speak about change adapt survive and she's going to focus on this as a journey and not as a destination without further ado may i request you to take charge of the proceedings thank you ma'am i am um, like uh, you know we gave just had a discussion at that time my ma'am was uh, just overheard or i think she heard it wrong when johnson said that he'll be uh, he will be had giving a long presentation she heard last presentation right so i am the last presentation and now uh, being an mba student uh, all of you might have um, known something called as the recency effect have you all heard about recency effect right so what is this recency effect can anyone tell me because being the last presenter is also very useful why right? because the recency effect will come into picture and i hope i will uh, you know imbibe one or two takeaways uh, today uh, in my uh, short presentation of fact i don't have any presentation with me for me i came in uh, like a panel discussion and impromptu discussion i thought i'll have an impromptu discussion with all of you on the topic what was given to me change uh, adapt and survive so i'll have an impromptu discussion with one or two examples which will validate the point that i want to go ahead now uh, as toastmasters you know always tell that uh, begin your talk with a story or a quote or something of that sort which will be a good opening statement so when you think about change there is a very very common quote that come in, comes into everyone's mind right when you think about a quote for change what's the quote that comes into your mind absolutely that's what it is right change is the only constant change is permanent and i would like so case studies i'll have uh, two case studies for you two examples i would say rather rather than telling as in case studies in a research article that i was reading uh, it was about uh, determinants that are uh, you know factors for business success so there was a research article written in research gate about determinant of a business success so what are the di different factors that uh, you know are part of business success so you all can tell me what can be the you know different factors that can lead to a business success and i would relate that to a life success also any idea what that research article finally came into a conclusion what were the determinants for a business success service timing agree that was also one of service customer centric services yes that was one right time right place right people that's also one of the factors that i can relate to adapting to changes that's what is my point correct right? apart from that is yes, of course quality of leadership is very very important and there were many 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 factors but being a visionary being a visionary and adapting to change was one of the major factors that determine the success let me begin with a case study or an example 
because I will, uh, you know, emphasize on both the sides of the coin. We should look at both the sides of the coin, right? So let me begin with an example of T series. Everyone knows T series? Yeah. So who was the founder of T series? Am I being a T? Teacher in me will always ask questions. So of course, if I tell you, T series still exists. Yes. Yes. So it's not that you know uh, that there's something that I'm not uh, okay. Uh, that there's something that I'm not uh, okay. Let me just okay. This makes my job very interesting. Then in that case, because I can give you a story about T series. Then, yeah, T series started as a cassette manufacturing company, which was basically selling pirated Hindi film songs. Before the movie was getting released, he used to you know uh, release the Hindi songs in the form of cassettes. It was basically a pirated business. That's how we begin with, right? It was a very successful business in 80s, started his company in 80. So he was actually, you know, let's not go into who was Gulshan Kumar as such. What I wanted to say here is that's how he began. Then he realized there was one case when he diverted a little bit from his current what was doing cassette manufacturing. He diverted a little bit. You all listen to devotion songs. Every, I think most of the houses will have Suprabhata at least in the morning running through. But do we know Suprabhata chants? Do we know Hanuman Chalisa? But we listen to that, right? Yeah, that's the trend in India. There were a lot of people in India who want to listen but who don't know how to chant those. That's why he tapped in and he went into recording and selling devotional songs. That's where was the next change that happened in his life and he saw that and he did that. Correct? So that was how he began his journey. Then of course he got shot and he died and then his son took over and then he, they went into musical production. They, were, they transformed themselves from being a cassette man. Because why? Cassette was getting absolute. There was no concept of cassette remaining. Technology keeps changing. Then they diverted it to musical production music production they started in. Then came 2000, YouTube era. YouTube era, correct? YouTube era, they saw that there is this trend going on as YouTube. Maybe, you know, even the music production thing or the DVDs and all those things will also become absolute because of uh, the uh, YouTube era that has started in. So they started, they, uh, you know, they uh, launched their own channel in the YouTube. In 2006, they launched their channel, but they full-fledgedly started in 2010. Now, if you see, they have more than 250 million subscribers in this YouTube channel, and they are most viewed. Most viewed. If you see, they are the most viewed. Billions of uh, you know views happen in a day. What might be the revenue that they are earning from the YouTube on monthly basis? What do you think? Any guesses? Any guesses? Gross, yes, monthly earning from YouTube channel itself is close to 50 crores. So this is another revenue path that they found out and they did it. Now the T series, what I want to emphasize here is from 80s to 20, 2000, they transformed themselves. If I have a student, I recruit and you know, after three months, months the pressure resigns and I will ask what is the reason for resignation. I think Vikram will, always, Vikram will also relate to it. Then the student comes to me, I mean, employee of mine, of course, pressure students, within three months they want to change. Then the student comes to me and says, uh, you know, what is the reason for change? I am not interested, so I am changing. Change is there. Change is there. I am not interested, so changing. But is this change a good change? No, right? So the change has to be related to a innovation or a vision goal that is related to it. This is one part of it. Correct? I'll give you one more example. Nirma. I am giving very old these examples. Nirma? How many of you remember the tagline or the jingle of Nirma? Nirma say I. Kill, 
खिल जाए सबकी पसंद निरमा वॉशिंग पाउडर निरमा दिस द कंपनी इट स्टार्टेड इन सेवेंटीज सी द ब्रांड पावर ऑफ दैट कंपनी दैट this generation my generation even i mali mam generation i mean i am mali mam generation of course <laughs> so every generation remembers even the jingle which was released maybe in 80s see the brand power but what happened to that company what happened to that company why and what happened to that company and why is the question what we have correct to keep it short they had a value they were stuck to a value system and that value system was low cost high value is it a good value system it's a good value system low cost high value was a good value system they stuck to that and they were believing in it so they didn't do anything else and they stuck to only keeping their keeping their products at a lower value that was the one thing that they did but then the customers perception started changing now what is the customer perception now about the low cost products low cost products no cheap absolutely right that's the word i am looking at low cost product are cheap what do you mean by the word cheap it is attached now with the customer status also okay correct now here nothing changed the only thing that changed was customers perception started changing the trend of customer behavior started changing and the company couldn't grasp that couldn't innovate based on that couldn't change its marketing strategy based on that hence it started falling down you can see here why am i giving these companies example because same thing is also related to our life we need to see what are the trends as as all the speakers are talking about the gpt we need to see what are the trends that are going and we need to reskill ourselves and change ourselves to adapt to that perception that innovation that's happening that trend that is going on to be successful in life finally i would like to give one small in the in i think uh, can you just help me in uh, recording this because this is uh, one aspect that i wanted to show my colleagues as well my phone yeah yesterday when i was discussing when i was there in office and i was discussing with my colleagues you know uh, i have this topic tomorrow i will go to stm uh, college for a panel discussion and uh, i have this uh, topic that is uh, change adapt and uh, survive what should i talk you know that was my question to all my colleagues my hr colleagues who were sitting along and um, suddenly one of my colleague uh, kartik shetty he just came up with an answer and he said uh, he started asking me question that you know who values change the most for whom change is important can you answer he asked me this question can you answer can you answer who values the change most the one who makes the his answer was bus conductor god <laughs> <laughs> and god kartik shetty this is for you he answered bus conductor now why am i telling this pj so he said you you give this as an example and see how but the response was not i maybe i am not a good uh, you know dramatician when i can you know enact and say but he is good uh, in dramatics as such but he would have made it look really good but what i want to say what i would like to end this session with saying that 
Change is important even for the bus conductor, company as well as to us. But change should be always attached with a good reason to change. And not just because you are bored or uninterested to do that thing. You are lazy enough to do that thing and you want to change. That should not be the reason for changing. And with this, I would wish every one of you a best of luck for your future. And I hope some of you will join me as my colleague at Promosoft Technologies. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ms. Lakshmi Shetty. The audience here will remember your presentation not because of the recent effect but because of the relevance of your presentation even with examples coming from the earlier decades. Now you didn't have to be apologetic when you said Marley Man's uh, generation. I think I must consider myself the most adaptable because uh, I have adjusted with that generation there, I have adapted with this kind of generation here, I have adapted with this kind of generation here, I have adapted with generation that's with me. So I am the most adaptable. <laughs> you, you had only one generation to adapt with, we had different generations. <laughs> okay. Honor, yes, correct. But as you kept saying in your presentation, let me bring the discussion back to track by saying that the discussion is open to your questions. Now you may pose your question to any one of the panelists in particular, or it could be a general question. And even when the question is posed to any one of the panelists in particular, if any of the other panelists has something relevant to add on, you are welcome to do that because after all, as we have had the refrain, we are here to improve our learning curve, we are here to see that we change for the better because of the learning that we get in this particular uh, session. So the floor is open for your questions. A few of the staff members and students, please feel free to come up with your questions. Meanwhile, I think um, they need some time to get warmed up for the question answer session. I had one particular question. In fact, when you spoke about artificial intelligence and when you said that the kind of job would change, I welcome to contribute. Thanks, uh, Dr. Malini. Very valid question and valid observation. Uh, the way I look at it is uh, the same fear or concern was raised when computers were invented. I'm sure all of you have read about uh, trade unions opposing getting computers to India, companies using it because they thought they lose jobs. Computer will take away all the jobs. That was back in uh, 1970s, 80s or uh, late 1990s, right? But nothing has happened. Uh, nothing happened to computers getting uh, used or being, uh, uh, one of the getting uh, used or being uh, uh, one of the, machi the machines for businesses to operate, uh, it's only you all, right? Machines for businesses to operate, uh, it's only you all, right? Today everyone uh, is wanting to be an engineer or a software programmer because the career sounds very fancy. Likewise, AI will be the option for probably many of the engineers as a career uh, stream, right? Uh, there will be a lot of new jobs that will get generated because of chat GPT kind of tools, uh, softwares which are AI driven, right? Uh, so someone with probably AI skills will be more in demand than the others who don't have. Uh, but I don't think the demand for jobs will go down uh, because it's just the way I think uh, the universe is designed, right? When there's something new, everyone clings on to it and that becomes the next th happening thing or next uh, important skill or happening skill or hot skill, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that's how I would like to look at it. Any thoughts from the other panelists? As Vikram said, true. Um, there will be, at the initial phase of uh, you know any new innovation, there is always a threat. And based on that, you know, there will be changes done. Yes, uh, because of ChatGPT has 
I come from an IT background. In fact, everyone is a technology background person here in the panel. So yes, the manpower required because of ChatGPT will reduce. Yes, because uh, my engineers now started telling you know the work that I used to take two days of man days to complete. Now I am completing it within one man day. So when we calculate man days accordingly. Yes, number of man days will reduce, then in that case, number of people required for that particular job to complete will also reduce. That is true. But to have that or to build that tool itself, there will be a lot of developers that are needed. To build that tool, there will be a lot of support activities needed. For example, if it's a, it's a chat GPT, of course, a lot of analytics will be involved in it. So, uh, allied. Uh, group of people will also be needed along with the developers. There will be innovation going on. Today it's AI and GPT, tomorrow it will be something new. So there will be innovators always required. So it's a balance that will happen. Initially it will be affected and later on within that field and allied field, things will keep growing. So obviously we will find, I mean humans are known to adapt, right? So we will find a way to do something. That is what I would say. Yes, thank you for the clarification. I think the example of computers uh, was a very relevant and uh, pertinent one. And um, most of our uh, doubts uh, and maybe even uneasiness, technological advances have been proved dangerous, been removed. We said that, okay, in the field of agriculture, in the field of medicine, it's all right to have it, but not in any other field. But now we no longer talk about cloning and uh, we want, in many countries, there is a ban also, unless it is in the, you know, um, when you talk about agriculture, there is this uneasiness and it is considered unethical. So do you think that there have been technological inventions of that kind or not? Anyone? Yeah, again, uh, my opinion is that I think uh, there has been a use of uh, invention that we've had, right? Uh, probably some get noticed, some don't get noticed. Uh, it is important that we have uh, governments or non-government uh, non -govern non organizations uh, having certain policies in place to control uh, misuse or abuse of some of the new inventions and uh, technology. Uh, that's the only Yes, there is always the threat of misuse. Uh, there are forces which could uh, use a certain invention for the wrong uh, purpose. I think that's something that we all have to figure out as a moral responsibility to ensure that all uh, human beings and uh, mankind as a race is safe. Yeah, the question is about uh, whether technology was used for a destructive purpose or if it was used for a constructive purpose. I think you, know, you don't have to just restrict your technology, pretty much everything. It, because end of the day, it's who is using the technology, right? Um, that becomes a more important question. Uh, for example, you were referring to uh, cloning, but you know the actual technology was CRISPR, which eventually got banned because of you know designer babies and they wanted to have tall, handsome, blue-eyed kids and all that. Uh, and that because Chinese found an opportunity to see whether kids can be designed in this way for a very affluent family and then it also got into military where people felt that they can also babies who are much more stronger, who can endure uh, you know, toughness and all that. But I think what's, what's really important is for all of us to understand that end of the day the responsibility is handed over to us. What we do with that responsibility is that matters and if you are ethically, I mean of course education one of the dual outcomes is being ethical also, right? So if I think we are taught how to uh, use anything that is handed over to our responsibilities more ethically, that would do the job. And it's nothing to do with technology, is what my perspective is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll be happy. Yeah, uh, since there are people with technology background, let me raise this issue. A lot of uh, discussion is taking place about AI. AI as a tool. But the person who created AI, he himself has called for complete stoppage of AI. But, you know, industry wants this type of technology because they can always 
bring down their cost. So what do you think are the dangers associated with AI as a tool? Do you feel that at some stage, this is a fear, I don't know how far this fear is. It's a lot of information. It's because each sensor goes to a different part of the brain and then the brain is all interconnected. So which means we are able to take decisions, there is not a lot of data that is available. Earlier computers were not doing that because somebody was working on image data, somebody was working on speech data, somebody was working on some other you know, models and all that. Today, all of that is brought together, right? And all of that is interconnected via internet, right? So a lot of access to these data is available today and putting sensors to the same, you know, uh, the data that is available, the, the machines are able to take better decisions. That is given. What is the danger? We are expecting that, can they do things on their own? Absolutely yes. They can do things on their own, right? Nothing shocks one robot. You have biped robots. If you look at Neuralink and uh, if you look at some of these humanoids that are being built up, obviously they can do. I'm not saying from now, but let's say for example, 15, 20 years on the line, can they do it? Obviously yes. But the question here is who has programmed or who, what is the rules and regulations that are that on top of which it is being built? For example, how we are doing certain things is because of our genes, right? A lot of code is being embedded in that, into our genes. Similarly, a lot of code is being embedded into their code, right? So what is being put there? Who is regulating this? That is where the danger lies. If you are not regulating, if not, if people are not coming all together to bring those regulations into place, then that it can go for a destructive purpose. Why is every company like Sam, Sam Atman, etc., why are they coming to uh, different countries and asking them to put a halt is because people are not aware of what is going to happen and regulators are not not being brought up to you know bring the right set of platforms all together. So they are saying before we could even predict what's going to happen, can we ask all of them to come together to regulation so that when people are building stuff like this, which can be very generative in nature, that means it can build on top of itself, uh, could there be something that we can build into the core, like the code that is there in a gene? So that's the whole uh, That's just for your understanding. I'll just add to what he said. Uh, just taking a step back, imagine life without smartphone and internet during the COVID era. Right? What would have happened? So, <laughs> but if you didn't have YouTube, who would you learn cooking from? <laughs> <laughs> Not everyone had your generation people at home. Some of us are bachelors in bankers living in a single room. <laughs> no, I am just trying to relate to how technological advancements actually help us to evolve. Right? Everything happens for good. Uh, but yes, there are people, there are two sections of people in our uh, community. The positive force and negative force, I would like to refer to that as. And like internet was used by both these forces, some for good, some for bad, same will happen with uh, AI, whether you like it or not. I think we just have to hope that there won't be an abuse to an extent where entire mankind or human race is at stake. That's the only prayer we can do. Uh, the second question in terms of, uh, yeah, self drones. Uh, now again, I'm not an expert here, just that I uh, was excited with the image or the device so I thought I'll bring it up for the discussion. Uh, but my opinion is, I think cell drones are already being misused in the Ukraine-Russia war, right? Uh, it's already being uh, misused. There, there are various things that have happened which doesn't come in the media, which we don't get to know about. It's already happening. Uh, hopefully, it will only stay at that and not get beyond that, right? Because today, I think all the big democracies in the world own drones, which, are, which have the capability to go and destroy entire nations. Because even drones could be uh, fitted with nuclear devices. It's not an, uh, uh, what do I say, far off possibility today, it is almost there. So, there could be misuse, there could be good use, because there are also some of the startups in US and UK which are uh, doing pilot on using drones for e-commerce delivery, uh, medicine delivery, right? Pharmacies are, uh, doing these uh, business case studies. Uh, so it could be both for good and bad, but hopefully it will not get to us. Like in the first situation, we will only hope for it. But everything that happens around us, I think, helps us you all make our standard of living better. And uh, it's just a way of uh, getting to the next level or higher level as I look at it.
probably from ape to man and from man to superman. There is a possibility probably. Both of you made very pertinent points and I feel that probably the world has to forget its geographical boundaries and come together as a conglomeration, as a conglomerate to discuss these points to see what is the best for mankind or for that matter if I'm a feminist I'll say womankind. Sir, before I call it a day and uh, bring this panel discussion to an end, it would be a pleasure if you could introduce yourself to the audience because you have been the... Is there a question? Oh, all right. There is a question, but I would request you to take the mic to introduce yourself till the person comes here. Yeah, I'm Malik Arjun, professor in Justice Case at the Institute of Management. I was chairing the previous session. I met you long back. It's a pleasure to meet you again. Uh, good afternoon. My, my name is Chetan Sadhguru. So I just had to ask one question here. So if you take traditional kind of approach, five books were there. Five books. So after that, it came a computer-based approach. After that, artificial intelligence came. Right. So ten, year, ten years down the line. What is going to be the next big thing that is going to rule over all the market? If anybody tells me, I'm trying to According to your experience, you should have one three years. I don't know if you're three years or one three years. Five years now. Three years. <laughs> <laughs> I think based on the response from Johnson, I was giving a lecture in a, to an audience like this on stock market. They asked me the question, tell me the best stock in which I can invest and I can become richer. Then my response was, if I had known the answer for that question, I would not be lecturing here. I would be investing and becoming richer there. Right? That was my love. Yes, uh, honestly we don't have an answer because none of us here are equipped with AI to predict the future, right? But we can only guess, based on the past trends, we can only probably do some modeling or prediction, right? Honestly we don't have an answer, but definitely I think it will be a completely AI driven world 10 years down the line. I don't know if I'm wrong, Johnson, please feel free to add. Okay, so let's understand certain things before you predict. And it's, it's nice to predict, I mean, you're, it won't cost you anything, right? So, what if you're looking from Indian context, you just look into what are some of the macro trends that are happening, right? We became the most populous country, great, right? So, which also means we need food. So, there is a lot of innovation that's going to come into food because we have to feed people. We are collectively growing as a large, uh, uh, you know, population collectively. But the resources that were there were limited, right? Water was limited. So you will have geopolitics issue, right? Either China is going to Russia to get the water from Baikal Lake or it is going to tag along with India to get water from Brahmaputra, correct? So each, either of these cases are supposed to be there. So that means you will have a lot of issues with water. Magnon is supposed to go give water to whom? I'm not saying, right? So which basically means we'll also have some issues. Our water might become saline, right? So a lot of innovations are going to come here. You don't have to go find what is going to happen in AI and all that. You can find out what are some macro trends that are happening. So therefore, what are some of the things that we need to do? For example, if you look at the top two countries in China, they are, they are, what are they based out of? Supply water. Because that's a big issue. In India, luckily, some of these issues are not there. right? But if you look at the reserves that are available, what are some of the trends that are happening? Grains were taking, we are much into wheat and uh, you know rice, paddy. So what did change? That was water was not available. So we changed the lifestyle to millets. Right? So millets became a big trend. So if you were to predict a little earlier, if you had gotten into cooperatives of millet, you would have made a lot of money, right? So look at it in this way. Don't ask for what are one of the sectors that are going to come up. Of course, everybody got built on AI, but AI is for Western countries. Because people are expensive there. In India, people, if you expect oh Elon Musk will bring Tesla, have he come? Has he come? Why has he not come? Because, are you recording this? Don't send it, tweet it to Elon Musk. <laughs> has he come? He has not come. Why has he not come? Because India is not the market. Because you are getting drivers cheap here. 
in US it is very expensive. So it would they would rather and Uber wanted to get uh, into autonomous because it, they would rather get that car. Makes sense. If you look at India, there are enough young people who are willing to drive. Okay. Even if you look at the other trend, if you are talking about automation, etc. Again, automations are coming in those countries because labor is expensive. Here, labor is cheap. Right? If you look at uh, why is Apple coming now and investing in India, Mumbai, suddenly, right? Why is it investing in India? Number of people who are now going from middle class to upper middle class are increasing. That is, aspirations have increased. Now, Apple is coming and setting up a <coughs> unit in India for manufacturing. Again, it couldn't have come. It had come multiple times. It had not set up its base because the number market was very small. So, we are slowly moving into aspirational area, but a large segment of population is coming into middle class. Right? So what is required for middle class? That is where the wealth is. So if you were to build something as a business or you want to get into some business, get into those areas where the where you can see an opportunity in India. You, you get so don't get scared about technology because technology is coming to do good for people, right? If it removes job from people, what do you think you want to do next? You want to stand in parliament, right? No jobs, no jobs. That's what you're going to do. You are, are you going to let the companies ruin everything? No, you're going to stand outside. I'm not promoting anything, but I'm just saying. You will stand outside the gates of those companies, right? So it's not possible. That's what he said. There will be a balance. Right? There will be a balance. There are some things new that will occur, which over a period of time, because of that uh, you know, normal distribution, it will happen. But what if you have to predict something, predict from a macro scale that's happening around. If you want to continue in India, think about the macro scale that are happening in India. You want to go to abroad countries, you want to go to Canada, you want to go to Australia, this is the best time because their, man, their uh, working age population is slowly declining. So need, they need more people to uh, increase their economy. So they are looking at people like you to go there. If you want to go, go. Best time. Saying don't go. <laughs> right? But that's how, you, that's how you can predict one way of prediction. I just had my two cents to what Johnson said. Uh, again, back coming back to your question, sir. Uh, you spoke about how AI could change change. Uh, just go to OpenAI website, the creator of ChatGPT, they are talking about artificial general intelligence. Uh, I don't know if I am answering this question, he is asking about 10 years down the line, but they are talking about creating artificial general intelligence 2 to 3 years down the line. It is planned 2025. We are in 23 now. So what it means is a machine will be able to do everything that a human being is able to do today, including emotions, making decisions as good as a human being. So they are actually trying to build something like that. And there are a lot of startups that I know uh, who are also trying to create something to do with AGI. So we are in the era of AI now. We are going to get to AGI where human beings and machines will be on similar stage. Right? That, that's their uh, motto. Including OpenAI which is created ChatGPT. The CEO said he is uh, fearing the misuse of AI. I don't know what's then going to happen with AGI because machines will be able to do everything that a human being is able to do today. And coming back to Johnson's point, right? Uh, just a glimpse of the future. 2008, when I graduated, Apple phone was a big deal. Nobody knew iOS. Nobody knew what apps are, what all these things could do. Smartphones. Uh, today, Apple is talking about goggles, right? Uh, metaverse or whatever. You can actually interact with people across the globe as if they are in front of you. You can just Imagine the screen blowing up, you touching uh, certain buttons on that, getting into a call, seeing each other face to face, or even maybe experiencing uh, the metaphysical world, right? Uh, for me, that is going to be the future because there are a lot of companies doing investments on this, including Google. Thank you. I, for one, predicted one thing right, that is the panel discussion is going to be interesting. I hope it has been productive for all of you. And I thank the organizers for taking up such a relevant uh, subject for the panel discussion. Thank you very much. I am sure that the youngsters here have gained immensely from this. And I must say that all said and done, I would like to leave the audience with one thought. That is, when you look at all the panelists, I think the lateral thinking that people probably don't give that much importance to in the educational setup should be given importance to. You have to look at things from multiple angles and that is when you are able to innovate. Thank you very much for asking me to be the moderator, Sumati ma'am, Deepa ma'am and Dr. Seema. I think the advantage of being the moderator is that my picture was on the screen for the longest time. So I felt like a celebrity this afternoon. Thank you very much. They say that... <laughs> okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. They say that...
conversation with an intelligent man across the table is um, equal to reading 10 books. Today, I have had conversations with two intelligent women and an intelligent, two intelligent men. <laughs> I think I shocked them out of their beds. <laughs> Intelligent men. Yes, yes. So you thought my words and my gestures did not coordinate. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. yes. Thank you very much. Back to the MC of the session. I know that we have overshot time, but we were given permission to do that, and this is for your information. As we come to the end of this explicative session, I take this opportunity to deliver the oath of thanks. Thankfulness is the beginning of gratitude. Gratitude is the completion of thankfulness. First and foremost, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to Mr. Johnson Tellis, CEO and co-founder of In Unity, In Unity LLP Bangalore. I request Mrs. Sumati Ma'am to hand over the citation to Sir. I take immense pleasure in extending my sincere thanks to Mr. Vikram Vasudev Pujari, Lead University Hiring and Relations Brain Enterprises Bangalore. I request Mrs. Sumati Ma'am to hand over the citation to Sir. Thank you, Sir. I am very happy to extend my hearty thanks to Ms. Lakshmi Shetty, Ma Manager, Talent Acquisition, Provost of Technologies, Private Limited. I request ma'am to hand over the citation. Thank you ma'am. My words of heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Malini Hebba, Principal, Swastika College. I request ma'am to hand over the citation. Thank you, ma'am. I thank our beloved director, Dr. Seema Ishanoi, for her constant support and guidance. My words of gratitude is also extended to the faculty coordinator of this session, Mrs. Sumati. Thank you, ma'am. My deepest sense of gratitude and appreciation to all the delegates for your active participation and all the teaching staffs present here. Last but not the least, I thank all my fellow mates for your presence and attention. Thank you. Once again, I thank you all for your cooperation in making this session a resounding success. Thank you all. Teams served in the basement, quickly have it and assemble back in the conference hall at 4.15 p.m. for the valedictory.
Office. I request the conference coordinator to escort the guests onto the dais. Present here. 
My words of welcome also go to all the delegates and the paper presenters who have made it to the conference from different colleges. Welcome to you all. A warm word of welcome to the members of press and media who are present today. I would also like to welcome I would also like to welcome the photographer, Mr. Kirti Sir. A warm welcome to all my colleagues, teaching and non-teaching. Last but not the least, a cheerful welcome to all my dear students who are present today here. Welcome all of you. Nothing great will be achieved without great men. And men are only great if they are determined. We have one such personality, Dr. Narendra K. Shetty, as the chief guest today. I request the student coordinator, Ms. Tushma, to introduce the honorable chief guest to the gathering. I am Sushma, student coordinator of the National Conference, deem it a great privilege to introduce our chief guest, Dr. Narendra Shetty. Dr. Narendra Shetty is currently the chief wellness officer of SEMIT Bangalore. Sir has conceptualized, branded, developed and operated Shemavana. Sir has developed and headed the operations of the 144 Keys Wellness Retreat in Bangalore by SEME Society. As the Vice President, Sir has driven the ground spa operation and international spa operation with implementation of the marketing and promotional plans quality control, revenue management along with training and developmental plan at SEME Society and Soho Wellness Limited, Bangalore from October 2013 to November 2021. He was also a spa consultant at EMTA Group, Kolkata from January 2012 to October 2013. So was also the spa and fitness manager at Jiva Spa and Fitness Center, the Taj Mahal Palace and Tower Mumbai from April 2003 to March 2004. He has done his postgraduate diploma in beauty therapy, Zurich, Switzerland. He did diploma in advanced spa technique, New Delhi, India. Diploma in Science of Chakra Energy Therapy, New Delhi. Bachelor of Naturopathy and Yogic Science, Manual University. With this brief introduction, I welcome our Chief Guest, Dr. Narendra Shetty. Thank you, Shushma. Alumni are our brand ambassadors. We have a smart groom and a successful entrepreneur as our alumnus guest today. I request Ms. Dikshita to introduce Mr. Vijay Pai. I, Dikshita, of 2nd MBA, deem it a great privilege to introduce our alumni chief guest, Mr. V. Vijay Pai, son of S. Venkatraman Pai and Padmavati Pai. He was born and brought up in Hassan. He finished his schooling from Hassan and higher education of BBM and MBA in SDM PG Center, Mangalore. He is having an experience in work field such as HR consultant in Bluestone Consultancies. He is having a two years of experience in board member team in Yajamala group of companies by maintaining over 1000 plus employees. Sir is a partner of Malnad Information System, Hassan and Mysore. From there, he is developing his own business as Managing Director of Pisils, Hassan at this young age, which is now a renowned brand across area, both offline and online, for silk sarees and more. With this brief introduction, I present before you Mr. V. Vijay Pat. Once again, welcome. I now request our director, Dr. Seema Eshenoy, to present our venerated guest with a citation as an expression of our gratitude. I request Dr. Jorman Dornapan to hand over a memento to the guest, Dr. Narendra Shetty. Thank you, ma'am, and thank you, sir. I request the conference coordinator, Mrs. Deepa Nayak, 
to hand over a citation to our alumnus guest Vijay Pai as an expression of our inexplicable bond. I request Mrs. Ramya Shetty to hand over a memento to Vijay Pai. Deepa ma'am and Ramya ma'am. We had an intellectual feed this entire day. I request the conference coordinator Deepa Naik to brief us about the day's deliberations. So, go to you ma'am. A very good evening to everyone present here today. Both online and offline, I have to say, as our live telecast is on. It is indeed a great privilege to stand before all of you to read out the report of the entire day. As all of us have witnessed a day full of deliberations on various topics, we now have reached the far end of the program with the valedictory session in progress. Just like every sunset is an opportunity to reset, and every sunrise begins with new hopes and aspirations. We have tried to reset and reinvent. At least an attempt is made for new beginnings. The day began with the inauguration of the National Conference at 9.30 a.m. by Dr. Mr. Revankar, Executive Vice Chairman of Sri Ram Finance Limited, Mumbai. While giving the opening remarks, he urged leaders to be proactive in order to achieve sustainability and reinvent businesses. Mr. Sudhanma Acharya, alumni guest, beautifully narrated the opportunities and challenges he faced in his entrepreneurial journey and encouraged all to take up opportunities and careers that interest them and not just to be a part of the rat race. Mr. Revankar emphasized on the importance of resilience in his keynote address. The first technical session was conducted by Dr. Vineet Gaikwad, Head Medical Officer, Tata Power Company Limited, Mumbai, on the topic, COVID, Challenges for Sustainability. He addressed the changing scenario of businesses after the pandemic and encouraged students to think out of the box and develop skill sets that will help them to achieve their dreams. This session was chaired by Mr. M. Shekhar Pujari, who wisely moderated the session and emphasized on the industry academia linkage. The second technical session started at 12 noon by Dr. Vineet Singh Chauhan, Associate Professor, Finance and Accounting, IAM Lucknow. He spoke on this topic, strategic developments in the business arena. This session was chaired by Dr. T. Malikarjunappa, Professor at Nite Dean to be University, who enthralled everyone with his in-depth knowledge and expertise. Now we come to the most important part, the post-lunch session. As always, we had a lot of queries on what the post-lunch session would be. To make a small change, a new beginning, we thought of a panel discussion. We had three panelists, Mr. Johnson Tellis, who would deliberate on community-centric innovation and health opportunities for all, Mr. Vikram Pujari, who spoke on resilience, the future skill, and Ms. Lakshmi Shetty, who spoke about the need for adapting in order to survive. All three panelists did more than justice to the topics chosen by them, and Dr. Malini Hebar did a fabulous job in her role as the moderator. She was adept and dazzling in her ways and brought new meanings to the entire session. The paper presenters brought in new dimensions to the various ideas proposed by this conference and gave ample food for thought. The paper presentation session went on from 3 in the afternoon and just concluded at about 4.30. I now stand before all of you in the valedictory session with Dr. Narendra K. Shetty and Mr. Vijay Pai amongst us here. I, I am very sure of the fact that each participant, each delegate, each individual who was present throughout this day is going to take home a lot of thought processing and a lot of information. Happy learning to each one of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.
you, Madam, for that summary. I now invite the Honorable Chief Guest, Dr. Narendra K. Shetty, to address the gathering. Om Shri Majanathaya Nama. Remembering the Reverend President D. Viren Rekte, respected directors, faculty members, my dear friends. I take this opportunity, thank you, the management and the team, for giving me this opportunity to uh, speak about in the management. And I come from a medical background, studied uh, naturopathy and yoga, but it was always my interest was to focus more on the sales and marketing. That's what we say that the medical students should equip themselves with a certain amount of the education where everybody is going to become an entrepreneur one day. You know, we may start with some company to work, but you will be an entrepreneur way for yourself. I always ask, you know, my team whenever whom do we all work for? People will go out, give a lot of stories, I work for whom work for. So let us realize we all work for ourselves. That is the truth. So we say that anything we do, it is all going to some way able to help us in developing our own career over a period of time. We study in the college basically it gives a foundation for your future. It is immaterial each individual which course he goes through, you know, where he landed up. It is you, you can see that you know many of the times there is a complete disconnect. The most reason is it is the our passion, it is our commitment and our dedication which we go into that. We, uh, I will just quickly take you through my journey with uh, Shemavana over a period of uh, last two years. SDM Institute already having the two uh, branches have been operational, one where I graduated from, it was almost like 35 years old. The Manipal, the Parika one is almost the 12 years old. So, Shimavana was a new kid on the block. The president wanted a new approach, new treatment protocol, a new perspective into the wellness. Most of these two projects currently be in operation, they are successful. There is nothing wrong in that that they are not doing well. But the only thing is, Ekleji says, let us bring a new perspective into the naturopathy and the yoga by bringing the science. So what we say that, you know, most of our treatments are all more into the traditional approach. We see <coughs> there is a lot of traditional system practiced in the West as well as the East. So is it required to be work in an isolation or we embrace the best of the knowledge what we have? So what we talk about today is the integrated medicine. So you take the best out of it. No medical system is complete by itself. So what we require is you need to see that somehow you bring the all systems together. Now when we look at the wellness industry, the wellness industry has gone through a lot of transformation over a period of time. We used to be a service industry. People were used to be get satisfied with the services which we give. You know, it may be a hydrotherapy, it is a yoga session, which is, which is become uh, any a massage or any of the treatments. Later, it became an experience industry. People started looking at how do we see that it is an experience. You are light, you are linen, you are area, the uniform, the interiors, these are all becomes an essential part of it. So now we are basically, we, are, we call it as a transformation industry. Today, people pay for the benefit they carry home. So that is what we call it as we are moving from an agrarian economy to an experience economy. So this is, plays a very, very, very important role when we are engaging the customer with a morning food. Now, when we started our uh, first, we really developed a brand. So we had a branding agency to develop a brand so that this agency went through the Dharmas uh, they understand our natural birth college, the spiritual entity as a temple, the heritage as a family, they met with them. They tried to look at how we can able to see that even though we are in Bangalore, how do we connect it ourselves to the roots. Now one of the examples I tend to give is when we are working on 
a couple of more wellness projects in the past. For pre-COVID situation, we looked at the best of the wellness facilities in the world, in, Bank, in India, including Ananda, Atmantan, Pema Wellness, in Kerala, Karnosti. When we looked at balance sheet, most of them were doing the losses. So they are not very popular, but on the books, they are incurring the losses, even after three to seven years. Now we try to look at why did these projects really fail? So it is important for us to understand, we don't want to, to highlight their mistakes, but we don't want to do the same mistake what other projects have been doing. So we realized that one is, there was a disconnect between the expense and the income, because most of the projects were following the hospitality structure of the management, while it do not require a, in a wellness facility, do not require a hospitality structure. I'll give a small example in an hotel, Normally, in a day, if it is 100 rooms property, we have about 50 to 60 check-ins. But whereas in a wellness center, our minimum duration of stay is about seven days. You do not require such amount of the manpower. So the second is we also looked at cross-training of the individual within about the group. So we did a value engineering in terms of the product. So what we guest pay and what we go back. This, the, one of the most things which we found that, that Many companies spend a lot of money in branding, but unfortunately, that brand doesn't get translated into an experience. And by not happening, you're not engaging your customer with a meaningful dialogue. Today, many of the companies spend a lot of money on you know, building the brand. They bring the best of the best agencies to develop the brand, but unfortunately, we do not translate into experience. So how did we do? We looked at the customer journey. Every touch point today, our customer journey do not start at the reception. Our customer journey starts somewhere in the cloud. It could be a social media, it could be a website. Or, so you need to look at the innovation should be brought in every touch points of your customer journey. Now we say that you know the guest makes a booking on the website, they come and stay with us, they stay for 20 days, they go back. No post treatment. Is there any touch point we can touch upon? I always give an example. We have seen that social media, digital marketing has taken off in every aspect. But I personally feel that you know we are overdoing the digital marketing, but we are not realizing the emotion aspect of your branding, the emotional engagement of the branding that has been lost somewhere. So if you can be able to see that during the course of our customer journey, how do you engage the customer with meaningful dialogue? Now again, I'm coming back to the branding. When we said that Shimon has a brand, how do we translate into an experience? We worked out on the positioning of the product. So what most of the hospitals do is they give only the uh, treatments, products. So we looked at not only offer the curative, we worked on the, our product, we have a curative, we have prevent you, we have as well as a retreat, which is going to be a new product which none of the wellness centers are offering in the India. Moving ahead, we, uh, when we completed our branding exercises, we see that, you know, how do we look at position each and every aspect in Shemavana, we start with balancing of our inner energy. So that is how we are able to translate that branding into an experience. Today what we see that most of the customers they give a fantastic feedback, not because of anything. I think the training and development is a key. We think that moment you come out of the college, you have finished your course, does your education ends? No. I'm, I've completed my course for 28 years. I'm operating, but I still, every day, I spend one hour in learning. So I look at different books today. There are a lot of literature has written by the uh, different uh, writers over a period of time. To see that education is ongoing, you know, we don't need to stop somewhere. Our course gives an art of doing the business, but science is something beyond that. So I always give an example, wherever I worked in the hospitality industry, we have a team of 10 salespeople. Out of 10 salespeople, you will always see one perform guy is a master performer. He brings the business as good as the rest of the 19. So this has been there in all the organization where we have worked. Now I always has that curiosity why that one person is outperforming the whole team. 
It happens in every institute. So that is what we call a design belief system. Even in the medical industry or in any industry, our belief system is important. I have a phone which is Nokia. I know the model. Product knowledge is important, but at the same time, your belief system is always important. Do you know that there is one hormone in your body which makes you the best salesperson, which is called oxytocin? It is a hormone. There is a scientific proof. There is a science of sales. People can read that book. It is fantastic. He's, he responds to the, each and every aspects of your sales journey and he clearly explains which hormones in the body will be able to be more beneficial. So how do we do that? You know, probably we can discuss at the later part. So how can we activate? There are certain hormones, oxytocin, sartonin, and the dopamine. These are all called as a healthy hormones, which actually helps you to develop that confidence. You know? When you are talking to an individual, you are selling a product, how confident you are, what is your body language? The way, the tone which you communicate, it all comes through the hormones which is there in our body. Some part of the time, we will see that how we can bring a certain amount of the techniques where we incorporated in the yoga as a traditional text very well connects that you know, how we can bring, use the affirmations and the gratitudes can be used to build up your confidence and the uh, uh, you know, belief system within you one of the books everyone should read is called Biology of Belief. It's a fantastic book written by Dr. Fortin. It gives a fantastic reason, you know, why, how these belief systems can be brought in. If you have a belief in yourself, you will be the successful person in this industry. I, by saying that, I'll take this opportunity once again. Thank you all. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for sharing your experience and in the wellness industry. Your words were full of knowledge and value. I could see a large scope for medical tourism in our country. Sir, beautifully explained or connected wellness industry to management, especially uh, marketing and HR. Thank you very much, sir. I request our alumnus, Mr. Vijay Pai, to share his journey of success. So thank you. 
you express towards your alma mater and wish you your uh, juniors. We believe in continuous improvement. So feedback of the participants is very valuable for our quality enhancement. I request a few delegates to share their feedback about the conference. Any participants here? Paper presenters? College of Business Management. Uh, thank you for providing an opportunity for this conference, ma'am. And uh, this was the very first time I've been in a part of this conference. And uh, it is true, I'm completely amateur in this part. I don't know how things work. But going there, uh, when I saw the rest of the participants, you know, present their topics, I got to learn so many things. And sir also guided us, um, he told uh, whatever topic you do, uh, he don't put interest on it and how you can, you know, make your topic a be better for a way. And uh, that was very informative, so I thank you very much, sir. I think, um, you know, it gave me a personal interest on how I can improve my work henceforth in future. So I hope that you know, even I can make a research paper or something like that and hopefully it will get published or something. But thank you so much for providing this opportunity. I also thank my personal uh, department lecturers. She was the one who approached me, Divya Ma'am. She told me that, you know, go there and what she said was really influential. She said, mistakes happen, nobody is perfect. It's okay, go there, give a try. Moreover, it will help you to build your own confidence and that is something I really built here and I got to learn a lot of things here. So, once I thank you one and all. There was a feedback form in the conference kit. I request all the participants to fill it and submit in the registration desk later while collecting the certificate. Uniqueness of our conference is the Sensex contest. I request Mr. Don Prakash sir to take over to announce the result. Good evening everyone, respected dignities on and off the days. I have the winner's list. For the first and the first time this is going to happen, the winner is not going to get the prize. Any guesses why? Yes, because I was also a participant and I have actually got closest. So the actual census was that 63,384.58. That was a jump of 466.95 from S30. So I was the closest, but definitely I would like to give the prize to someone else. So uh, my guess was 63,323.23. So I was 61 points ahead. I mean, off the short. But the winner actually is a tie. And the first place will be shared by both of them. And the winning bid was 63,310. That means they were just off the radar by 74.58 points. The winners are, forgive me if I pronounce your name wrong, Aiki Dahai Suchayam and Saumishri from SDM Ujjal. I request both of them to come forward. And the winners are beloved director Dr. Seema Yeshana Ma'am. Congratulations, you have a scope to invest and you can ask them to invest on your behalf. Did you guess it, ma'am? Yeah, we did that. Oh, good guess. Congratulations to both of you. Let's put your hands together for them. For the ones who are wondering what this contest is 
all about especially STM students. We generally have the census conference on a Friday of a conference where the previous day closing census, that is Thursday, it was 63,000. Uh, around uh, 62,900 approximately. So the participants in the morning when they register, they have to get guess as to what could be the closing census. The ones who come closest, either plus or minus, closest to that particular number, will be getting the prize. So congratulations once again, and thank you so much. Congratulations to the winners. Paper presenters are an important part of our conference. To value their contribution, we have decided to honor the best paper presenters. I call upon Mr. Prashant Kumar, faculty at the Institute, to announce the awards. So let me take this opportunity to announce uh, the names of best paper presentations uh, of the National Conference uh, 2023. Best paper presentation award under the faculty categories backed by Dr. Prakash Rabat, a retired general manager of Mahindra and Mahindra. Best Paper Presentation Award for the Student Category is backed by Anushti Shetty, um, Malayal Srivast Nayak, Institute of Management, Bombay. I request our uh, Chief Guest, uh, Narendra K. Shetty, uh, to give away the cash prize and uh, set. paper presenters can collect their certificates from the registration desk while leaving. Uh, same time you deposit the uh, feedback forms also. We are reminded that events like this one are milestones on the journey of life. As we come to the close of our valedictory ceremony, I invite the student coordinator, Atmi Alwa, to propose the vote of time.
जय हे 